It was a real pleasure discovering our city of Ashgabat in the last video down here to the south of this desert. And I thank you for all the excellent comments in that video. One of them has led me to another such city, just to the north in the nation of Kazakhstan. This city is called Nur Sultan and has almost just as ridiculous of a story. And some people may say it's no big deal. Civilization has existed here for a long time and of course there would be remains of cities. And that may be the case, which is why today I wanted to start off in a very remote place where it will be a little more difficult to use this excuse. Anyone that studied the mud flood knows that most of our past is buried. And here, out in the deep desert of New Mexico, we see a star fort. And it's clearly buried, just seeing the faintest outline next to this Fort Union National Monument. And this is where I want to begin today. Welcome. And what story could be given about this star fort in New Mexico? Typically, any star fort that we see in our realm, a story is given about its military and strategic defense purpose. How in very early time periods, people constructed these forts and mounted cannons to advance their military advantage. Sometimes we see beautiful buildings on the water's edge with star forts merely being the very base footprint. In fact, when we look at examples all throughout, we see artificial coastlines, carefully created on a massive scale, and typically no explanation given to these artificial coastlines. Eventually they become well-engineered and complex canal systems, but when stepping back, we see that everything is connected forming a complex network for the old world. And in our times, we're given a narrative in which everything is separate. Disconnected, ridiculous stories for the works of a past unified people. And with all the scandals going on in the world, this perhaps being the greatest and the oldest. The one theory that seems to bring everybody together, seeming most obvious when pointed out. And here we go. What about this star fort? This is something I anticipate exploring very soon with a drone. But for now, this is pretty good. Again, any excuses for this existence would be given to this Fort Union National Monument. And I have touched on this briefly, as many of you may remember. And to get any explanation for this star fort, We'll have to look at the narrative for this Fort Union National Monument. Located north of Watrous in Mora County, New Mexico. And here we can see it's in the northeast part of the state. The National Monument was founded in 1954. The site preserves the second of three forts constructed on the site beginning in 1851, as well as the ruins of the third. Already this is amazing, given a date of 1851 in the Old West. Also visible is a network of ruts from the mountain and Cimarron branches of the old Santa Fe Trail. And here a little look at the old Santa Fe Trail, connecting Missouri with Santa Fe, pioneered in 1821. The trail served as a vital commercial highway until 1880. Today there's a visitor center and some exhibits sitting at an elevation of almost 7,000 feet. And here a little letter by William Davis in 1857, giving his first impression of the fort. Fort Union, 110 miles from Santa Fe, is situated in Pleasant Valley, in the Pleasant Valley of Moreau, 
It's an open post. It has much more the appearance of a quiet frontier village than that of a military station. It is laid out with broad, straight streets crossing each other at right angles. The huts are built of pine logs obtained from neighboring mountains. So here in 1857, this trader and author seems to just stumble upon this fort and he's surprised on how it looks more like a frontier village than a military station. So really no clear explanation. And when we look at the ruins around this star fort, they don't seem anything like what this man described. We see brick and stone covered in a sloppy stucco, seeming to be the recent addition. Arches, and then all these stupid props to make it look old westy. And yet when this man arrived, he said it looked more like a village. I think he was giving a true account, and perhaps the only thing that was altered was that everything was built out of wood. And from the ruins, in their words, we can be pretty certain that this was anything but a wooden city of the Old West. The fort was established in the New Mexico Territory, provisioned in a large part by farmers and ranchers. The fort served as headquarters of the 8th Cavalry in the early 1870s, so really no talk about any construction, even in its earliest history, just talking about the repurposing of the remains, telling us it was first provisioned by farmers and ranchers, later serving as a headquarters for the 8th Cavalry in the Apache Wars, here in one of the earliest stories, telling us it was built by the United States Army in 1851. The soldiers were unaware that they had encroached on private property, and they had a legal battle <laughs> in these early days, until finally President Andrew Johnson declared a timber reservation, encompassing the entire range of the Turkey Mountains, part of the Sangre de Cristo range, and comprising of 53 square miles as a part of the fort. This stalling tactic worked until 1891, until the fort's demise. And that's it for the mainstream history. Really no mention of the Star Fort, and a lot of lies about this town, telling us it was built of timber from nearby forests, and yet we see absolute brick remains disguised as native adobe, and then we're given this narrative, which seems to fit none of these stories. Here in the Old West, and yet maybe we might believe this story if it wasn't for this star fort. And maybe this star fort wouldn't mean anything to us if we had not recently come to understand the significance of the star fort and how these are the mark and engineering of the advanced past civilization. And now this, in conjunction with these ruins, mean a lot more in 2020. And that's what they say about this star fort. What do we see with our own eyes when poking around here? A lot seeming to be buried once again. A lot seems to have been scraped clean or raked. And when we just jump over here to the north of it, we see these very, very straight cutouts in the landscape. Much straighter than the more recent roads. And let's have a little look at these cutouts seeming as if they are old canals diverting water in many different directions here splitting off into two and no surprise when found next to a star fort to find complex engineering and utilizing of water and again straight as an arrow something that'd be very difficult to accomplish with horse and wagon in the 1850s and here, another complex diversion of the water. Perhaps some ruins here. And naturally, this leads right up into the mountains, capturing any runoff 
signs of past engineering out here in the desert. And here a little look at these turkey mountains. How appropriately named. And now back to our other little city in the desert. Again located along a river and really just looking like a high-tech motherboard of a computer. And here is the presidential palace complete with antiquitech and some of the most amazing gardens to be found anywhere. Towers, let's see if they let us park ourselves. Always a sign of how free a nation is. So this is pretty amazing. We're up here on some walkway, no people, some traffic on the streets, massive towers everywhere, towers with domes, and we know by now four domes with a fifth in the center has been proven to be a working model of free energy as shown by the experiments done in Russia I once presented in an old video and no shortage of tech on display in this beautiful city and some of them may look modern but similar to a hundred years ago when plaster facades were used to cover old Tartarian brick buildings, it's no different in this time period. Buildings are scraped clean and refaced with modern materials. And given the layout and similarity to the old world, I think there's no doubt that's what we're seeing here. Here, this is called Battery Park in this language. This massive tower in the center and this exact pattern seen in every major city throughout our realm and here ending with this amazing amphitheater and a fountain and similar to our wars in the past seeming to be a stage and excuse for the destruction of the old world I think we see the same thing out here however this taking place in modern times this may be some of the reasoning behind most of these ridiculous wars and perhaps there are no wars at all only dropping bombs on the past and erasing our history and in this case similar to the city of Ashgabat we looked at in my last video in the country of Turkmenistan this city is being perfectly preserved retrofitted and repurposed I believe for future generations completely mind-blowing and they would tell us these nations are springing up out of nowhere and I think what we see is an excellent clue as to what every city in our realm must have looked like and these people were so advanced understanding free energy and symmetrical architecture and engineering able to reshape the landscape at will and meanwhile, in our time, people have no understanding of what they're seeing and what our past was. And since it's the end of the video, I thought we'd look at some random topics. Here's an article showing that bricks can be used as supercapacitors. Very fascinating study and a very detailed explanation on how bricks can conduct electricity. Very fascinating. Surprisingly, lots of information available on this subject. And I feel like this picture really sums up our past, our entire history. A very understandably primitive town in the 1850s, barely able to keep the wood level and towering over the town. This incredible wonder seeming to laugh at the rest of the structures and these guys appear to have just discovered there's more city buried under here quick get a shovel well this is weird this was sent to wooden nickels and i on our 1851 channel and this share proceeds to tell us of someone's experience in oregon they went to an estate sale in the town of Hillsboro, 
and up on this wall was this giant leaf. I couldn't believe what I saw. I went up and touched it, and it was 100% real, no doubt. It had little prickly hairs on it, similar to a zucchini leaf. I made sure I got the door frame in the picture, so you can understand how truly large this really is. And here we have this massive leaf, and underneath you can see the door. Unbelievable. Has anyone ever seen a leaf this size? And this tying in beautifully to our understanding that this realm was full of massive and giant trees of all different kinds. And how big would a tree have to be to produce a leaf this size? And here just hanging around in somebody's garage in Oregon. Let me know what you think. Have you ever seen any such specimens in your neck of the woods? So for today, I thank you so much for joining me. And do have a blessed day. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I think I'll try one more time. Here's a comment I found in a forum. And the poster of this comment says, I came across a historical textbook mentioning the following about Tartaria, written by Denis Pitot in 1659. It says, Tartaria, known of old by the name of Scythia, from their first king Scythus, and who were at first called Magogans, from Magog, Japhet's son, is called by the inhabitants Mongol. But Tartaria, from the river Tartar, watering a great part of it, it is a great empire, not yielding to any other in largeness and countries, but to the king of Spain's dominions, whom also it exceeds, in that it is all united by some bond, whereas the others are very much disjoined, extending 5,400 miles from east to west and 3,600 from north to south to the great Cham, or emperor, hereof hath many great realms and provinces under him, containing a great number of good towns. Then he goes on to say, when you look in the British Encyclopedia, the geographic locations of both Tartaria and Scythia seem to correspond, but Scythia was apparently thrown to a far past. According to the following historical documents, the Magogans became the Scythians, the Scythians became the Tartars. The Mongols were commonly referred as the inhabitants of Tartaria and the children of Magog. So very interesting. Here is a case lending to the historical account that the Tartarians essentially turned into the Mongols. And I would further speculate and say the Tibetans as well. If this account is true, shining some light on the origins of the Tartars. Many theories and speculation as to who exactly these people were, what they look like, what they dress like. And for over 20 years I've had the theory that the Hopi of northern Arizona are very similar to the Tibetans. And are these simple living people remaining on these lands throughout our realm actually the ancestors? of this wondrous empire that once existed, and now everything being flip-flopped, and these indigenous people being kicked into small, unwanted pieces of land called reservations. <laughs>